Welcome back. I'm here today with my 2022 Ford F-150 Lightning. I'm charging her up at an Electrify America DC fast charger. As soon as it's 100%, gonna hop out onto the New Jersey Turnpike, driving long loops from 100% down to zero. We're gonna see how far the Lightning with the extended range battery pack and 20 inch tire rim wheels will go here today. It's a beautiful day. Great day for range. It's around 72, 73 degrees now. It's supposed to get up to close to 80. Not a lot of wind. I'm seeing a little bit on my wind app, four or five miles uh, an hour, but we're gonna check that during the range test. We'll see if things change because wind does affect the vehicles when I do these range tests, especially big boxy vehicles like the F-150 Lightning. I'm almost at 100%. I'm gonna hop out onto the highway now. Please, if your first time here, if you like what we're doing on State of Charge, click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any electric vehicle, electric vehicle charging, and especially my F-150 Lightning, because there's gonna be a lot of videos coming up on this real soon. All right, well, I'm out on the turnpike, cruising along at a steady 70 miles an hour. I'd like to talk a little bit about what I do on these 70 mile an hour highway range tests. I always follow the same procedure, car to car. I even drive on the exact same course so we can then compare the electric vehicles, uh, you know, trip to trip and see how one fared against the other. Now there are some things out of my control like temperature. Sometimes I'll get car loans when it's not the uh, perfect driving conditions for range. Today actually is nearly perfect it's in the lower 70s uh, Fahrenheit and there's not a lot of wind the wind isn't perfect it's five to six miles an hour right now I'm getting so that's not ideal I love to see it down like to one or two percent uh, when I did the uh, Rivian R1T 70 mile an hour highway range test it was like 14 to 15 miles uh, the, per hour of wind, and that definitely hurt that range test. I finished up with the R1T with 254 miles driven. Now, I did have the 20-inch all-terrain tires, so that also was a problem, something that probably robbed the R1T of a few miles of range, but the wind definitely contributed. I think even with those tires, if we had less wind, if it was like three, four miles an hour, I think we probably would have gotten over 260, maybe close to 270 miles of range uh, at a constant 70 miles an hour. Okay, so back to the Ford F-150 Lightning. Now this is my truck and typically I do these range tests with media loans. So it's a little different for me today here. Uh, this is my truck. I just got, got it last week. I have less than 500 miles on it and already I'm charging it to 100% and driving it down to zero. But that's, you know, part of what I do. Uh, I left early this morning and uh, I reset the trip meter, stopped at an Electrify America DC fast charge station, as you saw earlier, charged up to 100%. Do that to get it nice and toasty warm so we could have good range. And I also set the tire pressure uh, to manufacturer specified pressure. Now in the F-150 Lightning Lariat with the 20 inch wheels that I have, that's 42 pounds per square inch. And uh, when I got the, the vehicle, it wasn't really set right. All, the, all four tires were at a different tire pressure. They weren't off by much, but I made sure I set them so we're dead on 42 PSI. Uh, then I also checked the speedometer to GPS. I did when I got in the vehicle, drive at 70 miles an hour. I have two different GPS apps. I set them at 70 miles an hour. It was a dead 70 miles an hour on here, so the speedometer is perfect. I then set the climate control to somewhere between 68 and 70 degrees. Today, I only needed it set at about 70 degrees and the lowest fan setting. I put it on fan setting one. It's not too hot here today. And to ease the strain on the climate control system, I closed the roof. Uh, this has a full glass panoramic roof and there's a sunscreen for it. So I closed the sunscreen to help reduce the amount of radiant heat that comes in the cab so the climate control doesn't have to work that much. Uh, if there's an eco mode, I put it in eco mode. The F-150 Lightning doesn't have an eco driving mode. So we're just in normal driving mode right now. Uh, as I said, I checked my wind apps. Uh, five, six miles an hour, I'll be checking that through the whole range test because that can change and when it does, it can affect the range. F-150 Lightning Lariat that I have has the extended range battery pack. It has a combined EPA range rating of 320 miles. And well, luckily, 
the EPA broke out the uh, city and highway EPA range rating. Sometimes they're not doing that on electric vehicles. They used to do it on all the EVs, so we always had those figures, but now it seems like more than half the times we only get the combined number. But on this vehicle here, I have both. The city EPA range rating is 350 miles. The highway is 283. And I mention that because that's sort of like the measuring stick that I go by when I do these highway range tests. Now, the EPA test isn't 70 miles an hour straight like I do, so it's a different test. So we're not saying it's wrong if we get less or if we get more. It's just a different way. You can range test vehicles a whole bunch of different ways. But when I do these 70 mile an hour high range tests, I try to do the same thing all the time. I drive up and down the same section of the New Jersey Turnpike and I do long loops and I do that to offset any possible elevation change. It's pretty flat here, so we don't have too much of a problem with that. But also if there is wind, uh, you know, I'll get a tailwind for some of the trip and then a headwind for some of the trip, try to kind of balance it off and make it as standardized as I can. Uh, it seems to be working with all the other range tests. We get fairly consistent results. And, uh, you know, I think people like our 70 mile an hour highway range tests. All right, so I mentioned this is my F-150 Lightning. I'm super excited. I, I reserved it the first day it was available, like right after reservations opened. I took delivery uh, July 1st, which was about a week ago. And I just got in the mail, well, it was shipped to me, the uh, Ford Pro Charge Station which is, or the Charge Station Pro, uh, that's the 80 amp charging station that you need if you wanna use Ford's intelligent backup power. That's the system that you can use the, your Lightning to power your house. I'm going to get that. I'm gonna install it sometime in the next couple of months. We're gonna do a whole video series on that to explain how you do it, how you set your house up. And uh, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, but one of the things I wanna point out is, so I got the Ford uh, Pro charge station and I'm going to be using Q Merit to do the installation. Now Ford has partnered with Sunrun and Sunrun's actually the company that ships the Ford Pro charge station. And if you want to get the intelligent backup power system, you have to order it through Sunrun. Now Sunrun will come and install it. They'll do everything for you. If you want to use Sunrun, go right ahead. Um, I partnered with Q Merit here on my channel, State of Charge, they're a sponsor here. And Q Merit does all types of installations. They're the leading installer of electric vehicle charging equipment North America. They do on-site energy storage. They'll do the intelligent backup power system if you want. So I urge people to always go out, get multiple quotes and check things out. Don't just go with like Ford saying, uh, you know, Sunrun's our preferred installer. Have Sunrun give you a quote. That's fine. But call around. And I always urge people and my followers to use Qmerit. I found that uh, for the most part, uh, my followers have been very happy with their services with installing home charging stations. Okay, so we're going to continue driving now, and I'm going to check back in at the 75% state of charge point, the 50%, 25%. Then we'll do a wrap up when we're done. So next stop's going to be at 75% when we are one quarter of the way through the range test. All right, we're at the 75% state of charge point, about a quarter of the way in. I've been driving for about an hour, and we've gone 73 miles. That's really good and further than I thought. I thought we'd get somewhere around 65 for each quarter. I'm fi figuring we're gonna end up somewhere around 260, but hey, we're, we're ahead of that with 73 miles in the first quarter. But as anybody knows who watches my range test videos, you don't get the same results in each quarter. It's estimating another 216 miles. That would finish up with 289 miles, would even beat the EPA highway range rating. I'll be really happy if that happens. I don't expect it to happen though, but we'll see. I've been surprised before and you never know. We're averaging 2.0 miles per kilowatt hour. That works out to 31 kilowatt hour for every 100 kilometers driven. Uh, not a great consumption rating, but this is a 6,600 pound giant pickup truck with 800 pound feet of torque. And when you look at it in that context, it's really not that bad. You can't put it up against a small sedan and say, oh geez, the efficiency's garbage. It's pretty good. Uh, but what I will say is it's been bouncing between 2.0 and 2.1 miles per kilowatt hour. So um, I don't know where we're gonna end up, but I think it's gonna be right in that area there, 2.0, 2.1. And I don't know if 
uh, Ford rounds up that consumption rate once it gets higher than 2.05 or if they don't put 2.1 on the display until it hits 2.1. I'm not, I really don't know for sure. Maybe we'll learn a little bit more as the trip goes on. But for now, great start. 73 miles in the first quarter of the range test. We're going to check back in at the halfway point. All right, at 50% state of charge, and we have gone 142 miles. The consumption rate ended up at 2.0 miles per kilowatt hour, but again, that whole leg, we were bouncing between 2.1, 2.0. It could have you know, ended up the 50% state of charge point at 2.1, because it was just at that like two minutes ago. Uh, so we're right in there, 2.0, 2.1 miles per kilowatt hour, and I'm, I'm pretty confident that's where we're gonna end up. So that means we went 69 miles in that leg, a little bit less, four miles less than we went from 100% charge down to 75% charge. And uh, that's something to keep an eye on because now the uh, range estimator saying we can go another 137 miles. So that would be a total of 279 miles, 10 miles less than it was estimating at 75% state of charge. So I think that's gonna keep going down as we go on, uh, but uh, we're, we'll, we won't know until we do it. Uh, but I will tell you, this is the longest trip I've taken with this truck. It's brand new. It had less than 500 miles on it. When I started this range test, it's so comfortable. This is a great highway cruiser. It's so quiet too. Now I'm only going 70 miles an hour. I have a feeling getting up over 70, 75, the wind is gonna start to really have an effect and make more of a wind noise. But at 70 miles an hour, this thing just floats on the highway. Really comfortable, stable driving. Uh, and I'm using Blue Cruise. We always use the driver assist systems when I do these range tests. Hands-free, uh, it's working great so far. There are some sections of the Turnpike that uh, it's not enabled because it uses the mapping system. Uh, so it has to, it can only you do the hands-free driving on pre-mapped highways and they're not everywhere in the country. There's a lot of them and they're adding more and more miles, you know, thousands of miles every month but they're not everywhere just yet, but it is on the New Jersey Turnpike for most of the Turnpike that I've been driving on so far. It's enabled, so it's hand, hands-free and it's working great. Okay, we're gonna check back at 25% state of charge point. That'll be our final check-in before we end the range test and we'll see where we're at. All right, we're at 25% state of charge. I got the shades on because it's sun's getting out. It's getting a little bit later in the day now. I'm getting some sun, so I'm cruising along in my new F-150 Lightning. And we have covered 203 miles. Okay, so in that leg, we even did a little bit less. We only went 61 miles. So we went 73 the first quarter, 69 the second quarter, now 61. And now the uh, consumption rate is pretty much locked in at two miles per kilowatt hour. It hasn't been fluctuating between 2.1 and 2.0 as it had been doing for the first half of this range test. So we're pretty locked in at 2.0. I'm, I'm guessing that's where we're going to end. But now the range estimator saying we only have 61 more miles to go. So that would finish up with 264 miles. If you remember at the 75% checkpoint, the miles driven plus the vehicle's estimated range was 289 miles. Then at 50%, it was 279 miles. Now we're down to 264 miles. So I'm guessing 260-ish is gonna be the maximum that we get out of this today. But we'll see. Um, I'm gonna drive it down as far as I can. I don't wanna run out like I did with my last 70 mile an hour higher range test. I did the Chevy Bolt EV and I ran out one mile shy of the charging station and I had to be towed. First time ever. I've done dozens and dozens of range tests, but with the Bolt EV, as soon as it started going into reduced power mode, it was over. And I can usually feel the pedal response and see, you know, when it's about to give, but with the Bolt, Man, it, it just kind of died, right, all, all of a sudden on me. And I don't want that to happen with the Lightning. I'm not comfortable with it yet. As I said, I just got it a week ago. I don't know how it reacts at those super low state of charges. But I'm going to do small loops at the end on the turnpike right around the exit that I have to get off at. So I should be able to nail it and get off the exit really close when I'm right about at 0% state of charge. Okay, so we're going to check in when I'm done, and we'll see how far we've gone. 
All right, so we have pulled into the parking lot and off the highway, we are at an Electrify America DC fast charging station. We are at 0% state of charge. The car is saying it has two more miles remaining, but I'm not pushing it. My friend Kyle Connor ran out when he did his F-150 Lightning range test and had to be pushed. And as I mentioned earlier, the last range test I did with the Chevy Bolt EV, I came up like a mile short. So we are here. I am parking now. And let's take a look at what we have here. 0% state of charge, two miles of remaining range, and we have gone. 270.3 miles and the average consumption crept up to 2.1 in that last 25 percent as i mentioned throughout this whole range test it was bouncing between 2.0 and 2.1 it just never ended one of the quarters at 2.0 but we ended the final with 2.1 and it makes sense because we ended up with 270 miles the uh, f-150 lightning with extended range battery pack that i have has a 131 kilowatt hour battery pack that's the usable capacity so if you do the math it works out and i obviously haven't drained it down to dead there's probably like a kilowatt hour in there as a lower end buffer and the car's saying it can go two more miles but once i pulled off the highway i don't want to just drive around at 30 miles an hour just so i can see that the it says zero i pulled off the highway at about almost 269 miles it was like 268.7 or something and it's like a mile and a half almost two miles when i get right off the turnpike to pulling into this charging station so that's where we're ending up here 270 miles really good now it obviously didn't meet the epa range rating of 324 miles it didn't even hit the epa highway range rating of 283 miles but for me you know a big heavy pickup truck like this, 6,600 pounds, uh, to go 270 miles on the highway at a constant 70 miles an hour, that's fantastic. Now, we always like to remind people, this is what I got here today in beautiful range weather. It's, it's, I started out the range test, it was like 72, 73 degrees. I ended now at 77 degrees. There wasn't a lot of wind. It was between three and five or six miles an hour the whole day. So wind wasn't a factor. Temperature was fantastic. So we had a lot of things going in our favor. If I were to repeat this test, say in the middle of the winter, which I will do in six or seven months, um, we're not going to hit 270 miles. I'm thinking we might do 225-ish. If I do this, say, in January when it's 20-degree weather, uh, we're going to have to wait six or seven months, uh, but I am going to do that. Matter of fact, if you follow this channel, get ready for a lot of lightning content because just got this lightning. I'm going to be pushing out lots of videos about charging. I mentioned earlier about intelligent backup power. We're going to do a lot of F-150 Lightning content. So if you're an F-150 Lightning fan, don't forget, please subscribe. Oh, depleted battery. <laughs> I got to take a picture of that. Depleted battery. Stop safely now. Okay. It is still saying there's one mile of range left, but it's saying stop safely now. So I did pretty much take it down to nothing. <laughs> so, okay, it makes me feel even better. But um, like I've said, if you're an F-150 Lightning fan or if you like the content I'm pushing out, please don't forget, subscribe to this channel, ring that notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming F-150 Lightning, electric vehicle, electric vehicle charging content, all that good stuff that I do here on State of Charge. And as always, thanks for watching.